Bay Crochet and you have come to Friday Fun Live. Yay! Where we can just talk about fun crochet stuff and just forget about all the world's problems just for another hour or so. And yes, I am very much aware of what's going on outside. We're, I'm going to refrain from discussing a lot of that just so that we can all have an hour of peace, but just know that my heart is heavy. And, and yes, I am keeping quite a number of things in prayer. But anyway, let's just go on. I just want to say hey to everybody. I am so glad that, that you all are here with me today. Um, Suzanne and April and um, Melanie. I see they're talking about the, uh, I guess, the uh, fires out west. I just hope things clear out there fast. And um, we have, see, Melanie Lewis, and we have Lynn Guider in the chat. Hey, Lynn, it's so good to see you and your encouraging spirit. And uh, Wanda Gordon from Bahama, North Carolina, and Alana. And um, let's see, Denise is in our chat today. Hey, Denise and Emily, so good to see you. I hope your, your garage sale goes well and with a minimal amount of weather issues. And uh, let's see, we have Charlotte, Bruce, yeah, Wanda, and let me see. A lot of conversation going on, which is simply fabulous, you all. Um, Suzanne, oh, talking about thunderstorms. Oh, I've got a story about thunderstorms in just a minute for you guys. Um, Hannah had quite an interesting week, and I wanted to fill you in a little bit now that things are being put back together. Um, we have Leanne in our chat. Hey, Leanne, so glad to see you. Golly, from the um, Isle of Wight. And, and Hildegard, um, she's working on pumpkins, thinking about my favorite time of the year. Love it, cooler. Amen. I can't wait to break out the ponchos here, you all. <laughs> uh, it'll be nice. Um, although I'll be gonna, gonna be traveling down to South Carolina in, in a couple weeks, 10 days or so. So not gonna be so cool down there, but it eventually gets cool down there uh, eventually too. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, let's see, we have Cindy from North Carolina. And um, let's see, Tammy from Oregon. Golly, lots of wonderful folks today. Um, let me see, hold on a second. Uh, these these uh, comments just jump around on me sometimes and, uh, and it refreshes. And I am so slow. <laughs> we have Ann Butler from Northwest Indiana. Yay, and Ms. Condor. Um, Elizabeth from St. Louis, Missouri. And the comments keep jumping around. Gee, Willie. Um, we have Rita from Alabama. Uh, Swati, I hope you're doing well. I've been praying for you all week, sweetheart. I, I hope hope your test comes back, your biopsy and everything comes back okay. I know many of you, many of us were praying for you and, and just, just wishing you the best on that. Um, we have Sandra. Um, she says she's making another skirt. Yay, Sandra. She sent me this beautiful picture, y'all, of, of, a, of a crocheted skirt. It was fabulous. And um, let's see, we have Abraham. She said, good to see you. Thank you so much, Abraham. So glad you're here to, to join our, our little chat fun time. And we have Mary Ford and uh, Esther is in our chat. Hey, Esther, give your mom a hug for me, okay? Um, one of our moderators, uh, and she is the sister-in-law to my son. So, um, so wonderful to have you in our chat, Esther, and helping keep us safe here. And Terry Redman. Um, yeah, Terry, um, I wanted to tell you real quick, you're using a Gmail account. I don't have a Gmail account. It's bonniebay at me.com. And let me go ahead and put this in the chat for any of you who want to get in touch on any specific issues. Um, not everybody at once, please. But um, anyway, um, that's for you, Terry. I just put it in the chat. It's bonniebay at me.com. It should come to me. I'm still, you know, I still got that book ready for you. Just remind me which one it was when you contact me. Uh, we're still trying to catch up from a few weeks ago um, of being one of our winners. We have um, Digo Crochet and um, Janine. Oh, thank you for your sweet comment, Janine. She says, love the videos. Yes, I, I love making them. I'm, I'm just amazed that people enjoy watching them. And I, I, I suspect sometimes people are using them to cure insomnia. But but hey, if it works for that too, great. <laughs> um we have Rita Walters is looking for a stitch, which some people call it the popcorn stitch. Rita, that's on my on my channel. If you um, want to do a little search, a little spyglass thing, just put popcorn in that spy that little search on my channel, and it should bring up a couple of versions and a couple of patterns with that popcorn stitch. 
Uh, I'm actually working on a, a, another project that'll be coming out soon using the popcorn stitch, although the, um, the computer and I have not been on the best of terms this week with um, having to deal with some missing camera issues on my imports, on my uh, processing thing that I use for making the videos. So yeah, we're, we're kind of not friends at the moment, but as soon as I get that working, something fun is going to be coming out with that. Um, April says she finished the Celtic Christmas tree skirt, getting ready to block it. It turned out great. Thank oh, thank you, April. Oh, I'm so glad it worked out for you. That was not the easiest thing in the world, I know. Please send me a picture of it. I would love to share it on social media if that's okay with you because I know seeing other people do my designs I think really encourages them to know that even though it may look complicated, um, it's it's possible. It, it just takes one stitch at a time. We have Namina in our chat. She says, uh, thank you for, hello, and thank you for the Celtic mandala. It's really beautiful, almost done. It almost lost my mind. Oh, I'm sorry, Namina. I know that one had some challenges. Um, I would love to see, again, if, if you guys can just send me a picture. Um, if, if you can't get it to post automatically to Facebook, because I know that's um, on again, off again kind of a thing, um, you can always just send it to my email that I just posted, bonniebay at me.com. And if you, know, if you give me permission, just let me know that it's okay to post for social media. I, I do want to be sensitive you know, to some of you. I know don't want pictures out there, but if you, know, if you do, just say, please share. And I would be happy to do that. I really appreciate that. Um, let's see. Okay. So Swati looks like I just read the comment. You're waiting on the results. Okay. We will continue to pray. And, um, yeah, I, I, I've heard those things can be really painful. Um, I've had some medical tests that whew, I would rather not revisit again myself, but, um, I do hope that comes back in your favor. I know my sister Brenda has had probably similar tests and um, very serious concerns in the past and, and they've come back sometimes they do come back okay so uh, I'm hoping you know hoping praying that, that that will be the case for you my friend we have Holly for kid from Jefferson and it, then it, it jumped as soon as I was trying to process it with my my brain here uh, uh, this computer goes faster than me as you can tell but um, anyway, um, hold on a second. Give me a second here. Okay, Jefferson, Georgia. I thought it was Jefferson, Georgia. It, just, it said, I read Jefferson and the thing went bloop. So, um, and we have Judy. Hey, Judy. And um, let's see, Virginia is in our chat. She says, have a great day. And Jane Chapman from West Springfield, Massachusetts. Hey, Jane, it's so good to see you today or see you in the chat. And, um, yeah, yeah, Terry, sorry if there's any confusion there. Yeah, I don't know where the Gmail came from, but, um, I, I, yeah, maybe, maybe that got put in the chat by somebody else, but I, I, I don't have a Gmail account. Sorry for that confusion. Um, and Hannah just sent me a request here to pray for Brat's mom. She had to put her, aw had to put her cat down on Wednesday due to bladder cancer. I am so, 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 so sorry to hear about that, Linda. Um, I don't even want to think about losing the cats in, in my family, the, the ones that my daughter-in-law has and, and that my daughter Becky has. I, and thank you so much for your encouraging comments to Becky. Um, she's had, eh, she's had a rough, rough several weeks. Um, and I can't really get into it as to why, but uh, because I will lose it myself. But thank you for your kind comments on her cat picture. She, um, her husband Brian sent me that beautiful, uh, took this picture of her. The Becky sent it to me, and I just said, "Oh, I have to share this. It was so cute." So thank you for your encouraging comments on Facebook for her. That that really meant a lot to to both of us. Um. So, let's see. We have. Don Anderson. Yeah. From South Dakota. Wow. Way out in South Dakota. I need to get out there someday. Um, hmm. I'm, I'm Terry, I'm reading your message here. Why, why haven't I received your messages? I have no clue, Terry. Um, I, if you could, if I could just get your email somehow, if you contact me, bonniebay at me.com, or even try going through my website if for some reason you're 
uh, computer is blocking it. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, the powers of the internet at B might be doing some, I don't know, some, some, some issues there. Um, and Elizabeth Wilson is asking for prayer. Says my brother-in-law has COVID. Uh, my sister is pregnant with their third child. It might also have it. Okay. Um, yeah, Elizabeth, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Let me, let me, let me also write that down. So I'll remember it. Okay, so I just, I just wanted to write that down. So I'll remember it for after the broadcast. All right. Um, yeah, Melanie Lewis, that's a great explanation of the popcorn stitch. It's pretty easy to make the popcorns, but I think just putting them in rows and then coming back and forth, it, it can be a little bit tricky. So I would definitely take a look at the um, at the video. We have um, Carmina Ramos. Um, hola. I, I, it looks like Spanish to me. Um, I hope I'm not assuming too much, but I'm so glad that you're here. Um, yeah, Emily's Price says, I can't wait to start the tree skirt, but can't find the right yarn. Yeah, I, I, Emily, I would, I would recommend not getting too fancy with the yarn on that. I would recommend just, um, I, I used a, a, a chunkier weight. I think I used a chunky weight paint box. I have a sample here. This, of course, is not the color I used, but um, paint box yarn, simply chunky. That works fine. Um, it, this is a high quality acrylic because since it's something that's going to go in the on the floor. And then the event that you're going to just have it on the floor, you know, for a period of a month or so for Christmas. I And if there's a chance of any carpet beetles or anything, even one or two can wreak havoc on a project like that. But the good news is they don't eat acrylic. Okay, so I would, I would pick something that's not too fancy schmancy that you don't, you know, that, you know, kids are going to walk on. It's going to get probably some tree sap dipped on it, you know, dripped on it if you use a live tree. So I would just stick with basic acrylic um, on that. Um, acrylic does have its place. I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna be coming out with some projects with some more paint box yarns in the future. I'm really excited about to tell you about that in just a minute. All right, um, I'm just making sure that, oh, we have Wanda the backwards wrong side crocheter. Hey Wanda, it's so good to see you in the chat. I hope you are out there, she's our, our truck driver extraordinaire, folks, keeping us all safe and supplied for, um, you know, throughout the COVID season. Such a great friend to all. Uh, we have Pat Dancer. Um, and Abraham says, I'm on the final push for the Celtic cable throw. Almost finished. Yay, Abraham. I know that's a quite a journey if you've never seen those stitches before. Um, but they just have brought joy to me for so many years. Um, all right. Just got a bunch of comments load again. Uh, Virginia says, been working on a six-point star blanket, taking me forever. Told my daughter, no more. I'm burned out on them, LOL. <laughs> yeah, that, that if that's, um, it sounds like a ripple, but in the round, I think is what you're describing with the star blanket. I can get that. I mean, I love doing ripple blankets, but only to a point. You know, you get to a point and then it's like, okay, I'm done. Um and let's see, we have Joni Trishler in the, in the chat and, um, uh, Eleni from Greece. Wow. All the way from Greece. Eleni, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and Denise Graham, she says, hi, Bonnie. Great to be with you again. Hi to everyone else. Hope you are well. Love Denise and Salisbury, UK. Wow. All the way from the UK. I was looking at some pictures the other day when I was in London and, and, and some of the outskirts and, oh, I would love to go back. Um, we have Kirsten from Germany. Wow, from Leipzig. Is that right? Um, how wonderful. Uh, that is so cool. I would love to go back there as well. Beautiful, beautiful country. And um, let's see. Uh, Joni says she it was been sad for me lost my dog a month ago Molly is sadly missed oh I'm so sorry Joni I do hope you can get I know you don't ever replace the pets you lose I I know that for a fact but I I do hope you can maybe get I don't know get get another little little fun furry thing to love on um, to help 
help you with that. Um, we have learned to crochet with Katie. Howdy from Oklahoma. I made your Celtic square afghan into a big pillow. Wow, <laughs> that would be really fun to see. Kind of like a big uh, lounge pillow maybe. That That is a great idea. I, that, that, that idea would never have entered my mind. Um, I wonder what you're gonna put on the back. Are you just gonna make another of the same or just maybe plain on the back? I think I would opt for plain personally, but um, wow, that, that, would be, that would be so cool to see. If you could send me a picture of it, I would love, love to see that. Um, again, you can send it to my email if you can't post it onto my Facebook page. And oh, Melanie, you're so sweet to pray for Elizabeth. Um, we have Anne. Anne is praying also. Thank you so much. We have Magali is in our chat. Hey, and um, let's see. And then we have Hannah. Thank you so much for being there, Hannah. Let me tell you guys a little bit about my week this week. Um, was it, when was it? Um, I think it was earlier in the week. Well, before, before Hannah's story, uh, I just wanted to tell you, I had a wonderful time with my husband. We waited two years for the America concert, America the band from the 1970s, in case you guys um, are familiar with them. Of course, there were only two guys left. Um, that would be um, Jerry Beckley and um, uh, the other guy whose name I can never remember, but um, the two guys, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. Um, anyway. We, we just had a wonderful time. It, the, can, the concert was canceled twice due to COVID and rescheduled. And finally, you know, um, we were able to go. And I was getting a little nervous there because both of these these musicians, they're the ones who sing the song Horse With No Name and Tin Man and um, I Need You. Let me see if I can think of another. Oh, Ventura Highway is one of my favorites. I blast that a lot when I'm driving around town in my car. Um, yeah, stuck on 70s music, but um, but anyway, it was just a wonderful time. And you know, these guys are in their 70s. So I was just really glad that it didn't get rescheduled because you know, one of the, one of the gentlemen um, passed away about 10 years ago. So I was just really happy to be able to see them live in concert. And uh, we were able to take a couple friends of ours as guests. So we just had a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, well, anyway, Hannah has had an interesting week. Our, one of our, mo our moderator from South Carolina, she's taking, you know, she takes, uh, Kind of keeps grandma barker company and um they had you know a lot of storms we all had storms from fred this week we're still we still are getting a lot of other rain but we got a lot of rain from the the tropical depression what was left of the hurricane if it it wasn't very strong but it brought a lot of rain and um lightning struck the house in south carolina nobody was hurt but it did blow out a, what a couple of tvs and um it fried three phone lines, the internet, and uh, some other things, um, electronic in the house. So Hannah's week has been putting that back together. It's just kind of patching things back uh, so they could, you know, be live on the internet. I mean, that's how she's able to moderate for me today is um, HTC, thankfully, got out there and, and did some repairs. They got some more to come out to do, but, you know, we're just really thankful nobody got hurt. And... We get a new TV for the living room, yay! <laughs> uh, don't tell Grandma Barker I said this, Hannah. But um, but that other one was was going. The color on it was was ready to be replaced. So so they got a beautiful, nice TV. So when we go go back down, we can enjoy, you know, watching Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune with Grandma in the evenings on a beautiful television set. But anyway, you know the, the little things in life. You know the the fun things. So anyway, uh, busy week, and so Hannah's just been great uh, serving, trying to get things squared away. Um, oh, we have, let's see. Uh, you guys are so kind. I'm just looking at the prayers. Everybody is praying, praying for Elizabeth. That you guys are so kind. So, so thank you. Thank you for doing that now. And just please remember during the week. Um, and let's see, we have JR from Las Vegas. Wow all the way from Las Vegas. And um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I just got a bunch of comments. Uh, hold on a second, let me bring this, bring this whole thing down a bit. Yes, so there we go. Um, and April Hume says, um, the paint box yarn is nice and I love that it's washable. 
I'm going to make the skirt for each of my daughters and their kids. We'll definitely beat it up so acrylic is good for this project. Yeah, April, they also have uh, some lighter weight uh, wool acrylic blends in paint box. I haven't used those yet. So uh, you might want to look at them. I have Again, I don't have any personal experience with that blend, but I, I do have some of these. I haven't started using them yet, but they look really nice and they feel really nice. It's a higher quality DK weight cotton. So if you want to look into some of that, you know, that might be might be more suitable for garments because, uh, you know, you can, the stitches won't be as bulky, but, but just a thought, just a thought. I'm, I'm thinking of maybe some, some spa cloths for that. What do you think? Um, uh, well, we'll see what we come up with in the future here. I just got a lot of other things, um, that, that are in the works in between time. Um, let's see. Freaky. Oh, we have Freaky Geek. Hey, Freaky Geek. Haven't seen you in a while. So glad that you, you've joined us. Um, uh, we have Joe Roxana. She says, OMG, I made it to live. Yay. <laughs> and um, Tammy says, I'm working on call the midwife blanket dragonfly pattern. Oh, I would love to see that, Tammy. I've only seen a, several, I've seen several episodes of that show. I really do enjoy that program on Netflix. Uh, although I've got to be kind of in a melancholy mood to really enjoy it, you know, because the, the content is so serious. Um, it's a, it's a wonderful show though, set in the in a historical setting. And I really, really do enjoy that. Um, we have Angie. Um, I can't say the last name, but it starts with a K. I'm so glad that you're here. And, um, and Sandra said, I made my Christmas tree skirt of acrylic yarn. I love the outcome. Yeah. And, and again, I'm not trying to push acrylic. If you're not comfortable with acrylic, Emily, I totally get it. I'm just thinking of what, you know, what will be safest on the floor to, to pests. And I, I'm not saying that you have pests in your home or anything like that, but we carpet beetles are just everywhere. They, they just are very common. They're totally harmless, except where fine fibers are concerned. They are monsters when it comes to that. But other than that, they are totally harmless. Um, and Nomino wants to know, can you tell us how you do a yarn join? I use the Russian join. Is there a better way? Um, Namina, to be all honest with you, I, I am not an expert. And when it comes to yarn joints and things like that, I'm kind of old school and I've used, I just use what works for me and what I've used for uh, all my life. I mean, I, um, I'd have to do some research on that. I know I've seen the Russian join. Um, yeah. And I'm, let me see, let me read your question again. So I'm understanding you. Okay. So I guess you're talking about when you, when you join yarns, uh, from one ball to a next, um, I just like to, you know, if my work permits it, I just like to do a, a really reliable, good old fashioned knot. But I know there's some of you out there that are like, oh no, not knots. But, um, I totally understand. I mean, everybody has their preferences, but, um, I've tried other things. They just, I just don't find them to work as well for me personally, but, but uh, I'm just one person and, and that is my opinion. So, you know, by all means, you know, look into that. I need to look into that more for you. Let me just, let me, let me write that down. I should probably do, uh, uh, you know, I should probably do some research on this and then maybe make a video, but I would do, I do need to get on board with and do some, some research because I know there are a lot of options out there, but thank you for the idea. I, that's a great question. Um, learn to crochet with Katie says, I made the back double and each in half double crochet. I will send you a picture. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I get it. That, so the back of the big pillow is double crochet and a half double crochet. You know, that's about exactly what I would have done. I would have done just a straight, straight stitch. I would not have done all of the other texturized stuff again, because that would just eat up so much more yarn that no one's going to see. So that was a wise decision there. Um, Katie, um, we have love to craft with us. Hey, just have a blessed weekend, everyone. Thank you. And um, L. Whitem from Colorado. Who great. I love Colorado. And I, I'm this close to signing a contract. Um, as soon as the contract comes, and I'll let you know more details. But I'm looking to be in Colorado April. I think it's the April 20th through the 23rd. But I'll have to double check on those dates just to verify. But it's um, in the spring in Loveland, Colorado, Yarn Fest. 
if uh, if COVID lets us, we're going to have a fiber festival with instruction and shopping and all kinds of activities. I've never been to one myself personally, so I'm really excited because it's on the other side of the country from where I live. Um, but I will be teaching there. And if uh, if you want to take my classes, I would love that. That would help me pay for my plane fare um, out there and back. And I am bringing my yarn, some samples, um, and I'm going to bring my guitar with me too because we always take really fun breaks when we do classes in person. So I get everybody up and moving around and, and we might even get embarrassed with a song or two. You know me. Just what the heck. <laughs> um Anyway, um, oh, uh, Joe Roxana says, I've finally been able to pick up a hook a couple months ago after my mother-in-law's passing last November. So sorry to hear about that. Excited to get back into making these live shows. Well, we're so glad that you're here, Joe Roxana. I am so sorry for your loss, though. I I don't even want to think about, about having to go through that anytime soon. But um, I, I do hope hope the Lord is, is comforting to you. Um Ah, Deborah Wood says, better late than never. We're glad to have you anytime you can show up, Deborah. No, this is great. I haven't shown you any of the big things just yet. I'm getting ready to, though. Um, let's see. Yes, thank you, Lynn, for your prayer there. And, yeah, Sandra's saying the lightning was bad in Georgia, too. Yeah, yeah, the lightning is never, never fun. And they're kind of out in the field, too, so that doesn't help the matter. Well, let me go ahead. There are a lot more comments. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can today. But as always, you know, just just know that if if I don't get to your comment, I'm I'm not singling you out or anything like that. I just I'm just come looking at them as they're coming into my feed. Well, I want to show you something. This is something that Emily and I've worked on, um, and uh, also yarn from Eternity Ranch Knits. Um, it is the yarn dyer for this, what I'm about to show you. I'm really excited to show you this. It's an easy repeat, but anyway, this is Emily's Wave Blanket. Let me show you the colors in this thing. There are eight different gradient colors of blue in this, and it just kind of mimics the look of ocean waves, ocean water. And let me, let me, Bring it closer and show you. It is a kind of a curvy ripple using puff stitches. And it also has some surface texture here, which I, I wanted something to help define the waves further so that it didn't get lost in the color. And this is actually a back, um, a low back rib or low back ridge or rib, e either way. Both of the words have been used in patterns. So this is a nice lap blanket. This is made up of, I believe, 85%. I'd have to look at the look at the um, thing to get the exact percentage, but it's it's mostly wool um, mixed with, I think it's about 15% silk, and and it's just it's just really lovely. I loved working with the the color wave, um, and here you go. I'm just and then the lighter colors. And I was able to have a really fun photo shoot with this. Um, I haven't posted anything on social media, but I'm going to probably start after you know, after today's live. And um, so, and it does have an edging. Okay, the, the pictures that you may see may not have an edging. I did add an edging to that because I know a lot of times people say, oh, what can I do for an edging? And I'm like, well, it's a ripple. You really don't need one. But um, but I went ahead and put put one on this, and I think it worked. I think it turned out pretty well. Again, I just did the the low back rib um, all the way around it, or not all the way around it, but mostly down down the sides. And it really did help to color a lot of the color changes. Cover a lot of the color changes in this particular blanket, and this will be released on my YouTube channel. Um, September 13th. That's Monday, September 13th. This video will be coming to my channel, but if you're looking for a kit before then, the kits are now available for pre-order on Emily's site, which would be uh, the, the video uh, link. I'm sorry, the, the link to the kits is in my video description below, but that would be lambshopkits.com. 
if I got that right, Emily. And so um, those are available. They are, are, they are limited. She has only a, a limited supply. And if you're not crazy about blues, she's also, I think, looking into having eight gradients of purple and eight gradients of teal, like a, like a green blue color as well. So uh, check out her site and see what you think. This again is one of those projects. I mean, it's, it's a wool with a little bit of silk. I mean, this is not a cheap project. So just, you know, just be prepared. But if you're looking for something really special for a loved one, um, you know, give it a try. And, uh, and again, the video will be live September 13th. And there's one other thing that I was going to hold off and not tell you about. I don't have any visuals to show you. Um, but on the 17th of September, I'm coming out with a leaflet on Amazon. This, this will also be in my Etsy store once I get, get the copies back from the printer. But it's going to be a collection of six throws, six cabled throws that you've already seen. Many of you probably have already made them. <laughs> but um, it's going to be a collection. It's going to be called Four Seasons of Cable Crochet Throws. And the reason that I haven't really mentioned it yet is because there are going to be two versions available. The way it works with uploading as a as a uh, self publisher with KDP on Amazon, you can only upload the uh, the Kindle version or the the PDF version, which you download for a price, and that is listed currently at nine ninety nine. But there is going to be a a printed copy available, and that's going to be twelve ninety nine. So, and I think that's still a really good deal. It's six of these patterns for twelve ninety nine. Um, each of these patterns, when when bought individually, are much more than that. So, and this is going to be a really really nice layout. Um, really pretty pictures of the seasons in it that I've taken over the years. So, um, I'm really excited about getting that out. But I didn't didn't want to announce it. But I keep hearing back from some of you. Oh, I see you've got something new, and I, I almost want to say don't buy it yet because um, the way it's going to work is is if you purchase. I'm, I'm going to try to link it up to the Matchbook program so that if you purchase the hard copy, because I know many of you in my age category, we like we like something we can hold in our little hands and and stick in our bag and not have to be dependent on the internet. I, at least that's me. I like to have books in my hand. So if you purchase the book, then you'll be able to get the PDF download for free. Okay, so I just wanted to <clears throat> let you know that um, let you know that in advance. And, and again, I, I wish I could have both of them up there for pre-orders, but I can't. Just the way the system is, I, I talked with the guy on Amazon and said, but I really want this one up there for, you know, for pre-orders as well, because most people want the book and they say, well, you, we can't do that the way it works right now. So anyway, September 17th, it will be live and, and the books hopefully will be available. Um, once I get one, I'm expected to, it's expected to be delivered. My, my author's uh, proof copy uh, is going to be here, according to Amazon delivery notice, on Tuesday. So I'll be able to show you one next week, hopefully. Um, but I think you're going to really like it. And uh, I, I just wanted to have a copy of that for myself, you know, so that when I go to shows and things, um, to be able to, you know, have those available for people who aren't, uh, aren't YouTube goers. There are a lot of people out there who crochet like us, but they just, they just don't do the internet. So I wanted to make that available to everybody. But anyway, and I might have something else in the works too, but it's too early to talk about that just yet. Um, but, uh, but yeah, let me, let me go on back here and see if Hannah has any other questions. I haven't seen, okay, good. I haven't seen any texts come in from her yet. So, just wanted to check on that. Hmm. <laughs> Freaky Geek says to Hannah Barker, don't you hate when the telly or the TV wants to be the center of attention? Oh, yes. Yes, it's, it's hard to ignore that when the TV is a blasting Freaky Geek, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah. You don't know anything about that, do you, Hannah? <laughs> um 
Oh, and Sandra's talking about their cats that they love to sleep on their Christmas tree skirt. Yep, that's another reason not to make it out of the most expensive yarn you can find for sure. Because, um, and the cat that I, that my daughter-in-law's cat was with us for a year when, when uh, my son and her were here and we loved having them and we loved having the cat here. But that cat would find, I'm not kidding you, would find the most expensive yarn that I had, usually alpaca, and he would chew right through it. So I was, um, that cat got into the, was literally, well, figuratively put in the doghouse a few times by me because he got into my yarn. And again, he would leave the acrylic alone, but he would go right for my alpaca yarn and chew, chew, chew. And, um, or I would get, get him before he chewed through it and it would be just all wet and slimy and I knew Felix had been in there. Um, April was wondering if they'll be able to order, pre-order the hard copy from your Etsy store. Um, probably not before September, but, but April, the good news is there's nothing new in it for you. I mean, you guys are my faithful fr friends and followers and, um, it, it's going, I'll tell you what it's going to be. It's going to have the, the autumn, uh, the autumn throw, the winter cable throw, which is the one that's not on the public channel, but that's the one that you had to buy the pattern for, um, if, if you wanted to make it and have the link. And there's going to be the the cables and lace spring throw, uh, Carolina Sun. That would be the representation for the summer. And then it would also have Bonnie's bonbon uh, blanket made up of the little squares uh, with the um, the nurturing fibers yarn. And it's going to have the glazed pecan lot blanket in it as well. So they're going to have six of those um, with with you know some charting in that for some of those. I mean, it's a 41 page book. So, I mean, a leaflet, I should say. It's, it's thicker than a leaflet, but it's not quite a book. Um, but I think the information of concern, especially with the, the video links and everything, I, I think that definitely gives it more value, or at least to me it would, if I was buying somebody else's work that, that has the videos included. Um, but no, I'm not, I wouldn't be able to sell them before the release, according to my contract with Amazon, but that is a good idea. Um, and you probably, um, well, anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that once we get closer, but, but that, that's a really great question. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Mm, okay. So, okay. So the backwards wrong side crochet or Wanda, um, they're talking. Yes, you're saying TVs can be replaced and fixed. So can houses. You can't replace a person. Amen to that, Wanda. Yeah, we're just really glad. Glad everybody was fine, but it was quite a kaboom. I would imagine, Hannah, I, I, just all of a sudden everything was out. And it was just weird that, that when the lightning struck the house that it fried three phone lines in the wall, but not, but there was one that it didn't bother so we they still had one good plug-in so that was that was really great at least <laughs> and it's also nice to have cell phones too that you can use the cell towers and, and still communicate even though the phone line in the house you know the old old time movies where they cut the phone line so you're without communication that's no more so yay um and we have judy quillen in the chat and amy joe uh, I'm going backwards a little bit here. Charlene Lucas, who says, good day to everyone in the group. I've been so busy we, with grandkids this summer. I haven't been able to get much crocheting done. School is starting next week. Yay. Ah, oh, but what a blessing, Charlene. You get to play with your grandkids. How wonderful is that? Uh, but yes, yes, school is starting soon, isn't it? Mm, I'm so glad I'm not... Uh, I taught for so many years. I'm so glad that that's not going to affect me. My life continues as is, and I'm so thrilled with that um, by the grace of God. Um, and thank you for your prayers, Deborah. Wow, you guys are so kind to pray for each other. Um, <laughs> I'm reading backwards, Hannah. She's like, I personally have enjoyed not having all the medicine commercials playing while I'm eating. <laughs> oh, they can be so descriptive, can't they? Um well, yeah, and Wanda, again, I'm going backwards in the comments. She says, so very thankful it didn't set the house on fire. Yeah, we are too. Very thankful because there's a lot of wood in that house. Um, 
God is definitely working, you know, working and, and taking, taking care of them. Uh, yeah, thank you for your comment to Hannah, Melanie. That was really kind of you. Um, let me see. Freaky Geek says, I almost missed this live. Was thinking of sitting outside between showers. You know, I did that yesterday. Um, it was raining a lot yesterday too, off and on. And I went outside to crochet because the rain had lowered the temperature outside. And it was, it just felt cold. And I, I like to drink uh, soda, my diet soda for my with my lunch with lots of ice. And so I tend to get cold when I'm inside. And yeah, I could just grab a shawl or something. But I decided to take my yarn outside and sit down. And while I was out there, I uh, was able to see a, uh, a couple of fawns and and the mother doe and you know it was right maybe I'm guessing uh, maybe maybe 25 yards away from where I was sitting on the porch and they just kept getting closer and closer and then the mother doe looked over at me and I'm like hmm, maybe she wants to learn to crochet but um I didn't scare them away or anything so I, I made sure they stayed clear of my flowers I promise you if they had gotten near the house and started munching on my impatience I would have been chasing them down but it was just it was just nice to see to see the fawns outside and and then I saw a hawk fly by and it, it was just it's sometimes freaky geek it's just nice to get out you know get out of the four walls and, and enjoy what's going on outside um Charlene Lucas says, does anyone feel like me? I just want to pack up a U-Haul full of yarn and books and move to a cabin in the mountains. Hmm. Let me know when you do, Charlene. Let me give me your address. I might join you. I would love that. Um, I, and I've got the yarn. I'll bring the yarn, my friend. And i got books. I've got lots of books. So, um, yeah, that, that does sound like fun. And to not have to record anything. I, no, I actually do enjoy recording stuff. It's just the working with the computer and writing is the part that just keeps me from crocheting as much as I'd like. But but yeah, that that does sound that does sound yummy. That sounds wonderful. Uh, let's see. Oh man, just so many great folks here. You guys are so kind to each other. We have is it is it him? But, Emma Chali Mina, is that right? Um, glad you could join us. I hope I didn't say that wrong, but uh, I have a feeling I did. <laughs> we have Sarah Sands. She says, I make really tight knots. I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah, Sarah. I mean, it, it just depends. You know, there's some people out there going back to the knot, to knot or not to knot uh, conversation. Yeah, some people are, you know, pretty opinionated about that. And, you know, that's fine. It's great. It's okay if you want to have an opinion. That's totally fine. Um, but I've learned how to hide the strands pretty well. And, you know, as long as I now if I'm knitting, it's totally different. You know, if you're knitting, it, it, it's a little harder to hide the stuff. But with crochet, there's so much fabric to hide everything away that I just have not found it a problem. Uh, da, 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 da. And Alicia says, please, Bonnie, it's very important to have the multiples when you make the videos. Without the multiples, we cannot adapt the pattern. Yeah, I get that. Alicia, there's a lot of older patterns that are online. I've only got about 600 of them. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of that stuff I didn't really include so much early on. Um, but I, I try to include that. If you're looking for that information, a lot of times I will add it to the video description. So if you're looking for something, definitely hit that little triangle that opens up the video description. Or if you're looking at a computer, it'll say read more. And if you tap on that or, or click it with your cursor, um, with your computer, it will open up a whole ton of other links, information, comments, um, additional stitch counts, maybe. Um, not on every single one, but I, I am trying to be more mindful of that. The only problem that I, I come into, people want to alter patterns that have like six or five and six different stitches in them and center motifs that you know took me a lot of time to design and and a lot of times that's just not a simple straight answer and that's why a lot of times my answer is not this is the multiple but it's like add this number add this multiple to the existing stitch counter to the existing starting chain because the starting chain is not just the straight multiple it includes the stitches at the beginning the stitches at the end any altercations that had to be made to make the five stitches gel together into one single pattern so the, 
there's a lot behind that. I get, I get questions, um, all the time and people think I can just give them one number and I can convert this blanket into, well, I want to make it for my queen size bed. How many stitches do I start with? And I'm like, uh, there were only like, you know, it's like, uh, it's not quite a rocket science question, but close because there is not just one, there are like four or five different variables going back to seventh, eighth grade pre-algebra terminology here, you know, variables in that equation. Yeah. How, how a person crochets, what is their gauge like? What yarn are you using? What is your, your gauge with that particular yarn? Um, what type of hook are you using? Depending on even the brand of hook that you use, you can get different gauges. Yes, yes. Check out that video on which is the quickest, which is the fastest crochet hook. And you'll see the same crocheter with the same size hook can have three different gauges. So there are a lot of variables in that question. But if it's just a simple straight, you know, how do I just get the stitches to work out? Um, I usually give a number that you can add to the existing starting chain just to kind of make it easier for everybody. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I do need to get better about that. I have tried to focus on that in my more recent videos, but a lot of the videos that are the most popular out there were ones that I did probably seven or eight years ago when I was brand new to doing all of this. And um, hopefully you'll see I've learned a lot since then, but you know, the old videos are still there and those are the ones with all the hits on it. But, um, but yeah, I, I think I have added the video, the information to the video description. So, but anyway, that is a great question. I am trying, I am trying. Um, and, and also there are some things that just don't adapt well, uh, like, um, like this scarf, um, people were, you know, were wondering what the, the multiple is on this scarf. This is the latest, um, this is the, um, latest release on my channel. Now the multiple would be, I think it's 14 for this. I think, no, it's 16. I think it's 16, but anyway, anyway regardless, you know, as soon as you start adding multiple this, you've totally changed the design because it's no longer a little decorative scarf. It becomes, you know, something more like a stole. So, um, you know, it's no longer a scarf. So, it, you know, sometimes the multiples will, well, again, just completely change, um, the whole idea, but, but in most not, that's not the case, but, but yeah, but anyway, I'm going to move on here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, all right, hold on a second here. I'm just trying to find where I am. We have, is that, is it, is it Lake Zesper, if I'm saying that right? Um, from, from Iran. Wow. Thank you for joining us today. That is, that is amazing. Uh, I'm not sure we get many people watching us from Iran, Iran, but, um, I, I have many friends here in the Washington DC area from your country, um, and delightful dear people. So, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, and Deborah says she uses the Russian joint all the time, especially on clothing. Yeah, Deborah, I need, I need to, I need to get on board and find out what a little, little bit more about that. I remember trying that in the past, but I will definitely do that. Um, and we have man, Mandalia 15 is in our chat. Hey, thanks for, thanks for your kind comment there. Um, this is my joy to do this. <laughs> Jan says, well, Bonnie, you could teach even a deer to crochet. Yeah. <laughs> As long as I can keep her out of my flowers, I would be happy to teach her how to crochet. Although I'm not sure what we're going to do with those hooves. Um, yeah. Uh, Hannah says a CGI zombie deer. <laughs> um, Freaky Geek says teach the deer how to hook while in turn get free rides. Oh boy. Yep. Uh, and and Suzanne says, many of the patterns in the books do not have corresponding videos on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a new thing, Suzanne, that we can even do that. Um, in case some of you all are, are new, I do have a couple others. Many of the, well, these patterns are all on my public YouTube channel, but I do have this book available if you're looking for easy beginner um, blankets. And um, 
all of the videos for right-handed and left-handed are also linked in. And this is also part, this is again, a, a one you can get off of Amazon. It's also part of the matchbook program, which means if you buy the physical copy, you can download the PDF and hint, hint, it's much easier to get to the links using the PDF the uh, that you download. You just click on the link. If you have um, like an Amazon Fire or one of these other tablets that don't interact well with hyperlinks, what you can do is copy and paste it into your web browser. There have been many people who've commented on this book and also on my cable crochet. Do I have it here? No, I don't. My cable crochet made easy book saying, oh, the links don't work. Well, I hate to tell you ladies and gentlemen, they do work. <laughs> They've been tried uh, and they were tested. I don't want to say a, definitely not a million times, but at least a couple of dozen times by me, by my editors, tech editors, people who helped me with the book, friends that I'll say, does this work? Will you look at this PDF and check the links? And everyone's like, everything is good to go. So I do know for a fact that the links do work. When you look at the, again, you look at the Amazon reviews and people are very disgruntled and they're like, ah, this doesn't work. It will, that's because they're not technically inept, quite frankly. All they have to do is make a copy um, I don't, I'm not a tablet user, but I, I use, I do this with computers all the time. I even had someone send me something saying this link doesn't work. And they sent me the link. I clicked on it and it opened up the document right away. So um, if you copy and paste the, the link, just copy it, paste it into your web, web browser. If you can do that on a Kindle, I don't know. Um, I know you, I'm pretty sure you can do it on an iPad and um, other type of tablets. Um, so so if you can do that, then you can open the documents and get right to it. But that's why I have the matchbook offer for free. So you don't even have to pay a dollar for them. It's just, it's just free if you buy the hard copy. And that way you can just, boom, you can get right to it. You don't have to try to copy all of these encrypted um, letters, which I know are not, not fun to read, not easy to read. All right, Suzanne has a question. She has purchased, wow all of your books on Amazon, and she wants to know if there's a way she can access the videos for the pattern through Amazon. She says some of the patterns don't have the corresponding YouTube videos on YouTube. Okay, no, not all of my books, only the self-published books, Suzanne. That would be the Easy Beginner ba Baby Books and Cable Crochet Made Easy. Those are the two books that I've published there with videos. Um, and, and then the fourth, the fourth, I have another book, but it's just a reading book. It's not a, it's the one about the uh, winning at the fair. Um, that's also an Amazon book, but that's not a pattern book. And the, the one for that will be coming in September on September 17th, um, you should be able to download those. Now, if you bought them from Amazon a long time ago, they should have that record and it's still part of the matchbook program. You should just go to customer service and they should be able to link it up and you should be good to go. Okay. So I hope that's helpful. <sighs> uh, yes. Um, <laughs> Hannah, you're so funny. Um, okay. Charlene says, okay, you want a crochet book and haven't received it yet. Um, I sent them all out, Charlene, uh, could you send me an email again, bonniebay at me.com? I'm not sure what happened. If you sent me your address, I can, um, I'll go look that up again. If you sent me your address, I would have sent it out. Sometimes people don't respond and send me their address. So um, if you just contact me, bonniebay at me.com, and um, we can work that out for sure. Because I know a lot of folks have received them. Um, and if I see your name and address, I'll know whether I sent it or not because um, I, I kind of remember places and I, and I can double check on. I can actually check my, my postage receipts and see if it went there. All right. Um, Yeah, April Hroom says, I try to break it down by section when I'm trying to figure out the multiples and then a little trial and error, but you can usually figure it out. Yeah, that can be a little tricky sometimes. And I also have a video on the channel that says, um, you know, oh no, I have too many chains. So you can take a look at that. And if you're ever unsure, you can always just crochet an extra long chain and then just take out the chains at the beginning. I mean, that's kind of the, 
I guess the cheater mentality, <laughs> but you know, I, I have done that. I've like crochet, I just didn't do the right count. And then I'll, I'm going to just undo this one and take it out. Now it's a, it's a bummer if there weren't enough change, that's one thing. But if, if you have extra change, you can always pull those back and, and, and make it look like there was nothing ever wrong. And Hannah wants me to post, let me go ahead and post my, my email again. It's also in a video description. Okay, there you go. I just posted my my um, contact uh, email once again. Okay, I'll have to look that one up, Freaky Gay. She says, I use the Stephen Weaven method. Let me look that up. I don't know if that's something you just made up or if it's something that's real, but I will look that up and see. I know there are a lot of different, a lot of different, I mean, probably as many different ways of, of doing this as there are YouTube channels out there on crochet, but, um, yeah, the, yeah, Terry, the, uh, the email is down there for now. Um, and talking about gauge here. Okay. Deborah Wood says, okay, going back to the Russian join is when you, when you loop your yarn with your needle, sewing into itself, then take your other yarn through the existing loop and into itself, then pull tight. The join looks like a color change. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that before. Um, <laughs> Joni says that the finches are devouring her zinnias. Oh, wow. We haven't had that problem. We don't have zinnias. That's probably why <laughs> uh, the deer usually like to eat my, uh, my impatience and if I grow any food usually the rabbits we have a, a family of bunny rabbit live rabbit uh, wild rabbits living right across our driveway into this undeveloped piece of land next to our house and the bunnies come and go they come and they eat what they want and then they disappear again and our neighbor over here has this wonderful garden and I noticed the deer are always waiting right outside the fence so I don't know how much how many issues he's had with that this year, but um, yeah, they attract a lot of attention from wildlife around here. Well, there is, um, let's see, there was one other thing I could show you, but I think I may, I may hold that back till next time because it is getting a little on the late side. I'm just gonna check. Okay, here's the comment I was looking for. April says, so true about the gauge. I have determined after many gauge watches, I am always half a hook size tighter than you, so I always go half a hook size larger. Excellent. Yes, that's that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. I always tell people they want to know what size hook, what size hook, and it's like, well, you know, it really doesn't. It it really matters more what your gauge is rather than your hook size. Um, so uh, you you may have to go up a size, you may have to go down a size, and and that's okay. What's important, uh, especially in projects like the project I showed you with Emily's wave blanket, it's pretty important that you stay near gauge if you buy the if you buy the kit but the good news is even with the extra uh the extra optional edging I had plenty of yarn let me let me let me even show you I'm gonna show you the bag even there's not enough for extra rows I mean, I, I wouldn't go ahead and, and make it longer, but, but I mean, this is all the extra yarn I had left over. I mean, it's just little tiny samples now, but it, it just tells me that there's plenty of leeway if you're even, even off just a tiny bit. But um, I would, if you're using kits from anywhere um, or making a fitted garment like a sweater or something like that, gauge is supreme, gauge is master, <laughs> you have to know for sure, just to make sure the garment fits or that you have enough yarn. Like if you went up a size, like one or two size hooks on a, on a kit like this, then you are probably going to run out of yarn sooner than you should. So you just need to need to watch that. But once you've established what hook size you need, you're fine. Um, once you're comfortable with that, you're good to go. Um, uh, someone's talking about leg warmers somewhere see Freaky Geek responding to leg warmers. Yeah, I've, yeah, I haven't heard of doing those in a long time. I've only made one or two pairs of those and I honestly, I've never worn them. <laughs> so I generally figure people don't wear them too often. Um, let's see. 
All right. Um, yeah, talk about the finches and the Russian join. Ah, and Jacqueline says, glad to be here. Can you believe that it is humid again in Los Angeles? Ah, you poor thing. <laughs> I just know you guys get the greatest weather, but yeah, a little humid. Well, it is summer. Sorry, didn't mean to be so sarcastic there, Ritzy Jacqueline. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, uh, yeah, when I'm in South Carolina, it's like totally humid all the time. It's like walking into a wall of water when you go out. Reminds me of being in Florida. Um, uh, but I do miss that, though. It's nice to be out when it's nice, the weather's good. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, okay, so... Okay, so sorry about that. I'm reading the comments there again about, about the book. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I mean, I don't know where, I don't know what happened there. Sometimes if I don't get the email, if I don't get the email to where to send it, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that. But if, if Charlene gets in touch with me, I'd be glad to, to make that right because I don't, you know, I, I keep my word as much as I physically, humanly possibly can. Um, what's this? Okay, so Terry Redmond doesn't have the chat. Terry, if you wanted to look at the chat after this uh, video ends, um, the the video chat will be up within probably an hour or two after we're done. Um, and then Laurel says, Laurel says, um, I use copy and paste on iPhone to check tracking when I order stuff online. It's easier than memorizing a zillion numbers. Yeah, absolutely. I do that a lot too. Um, all right. Um, thank you for your kind comment, Denise. Yes, I do try to put a lot of effort into what I'm doing here. It's it's pretty much what I do full time and many more, even more than 40 hours a week, I promise you. It's probably more like 60 if you count the weekends, but um, uh, or Saturdays and evenings. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, but I do enjoy it so much. Um, let's see. And I have been kind of quiet on social media this week just because I've been so busy wrestling with these transistorized tormentors here we call computers. And um, doing a desktop publishing is not for the weak at heart. Oh, thank you, Melanie. She's just reminding everybody, if you could hit the thumbs up, that really does help this video to go places. Um, uh, all right. Well, let me go ahead. I wanted to go ahead and read something. I mean, let me just make sure, make sure. I, I think I, I think I've got just about everybody. Oh, we have. Um, okay, we have Jeffrey Crawley. I wore leg warmers. I crocheted during the freeze here in Houston in January, and we had no power. Lifesaver. Oh yeah, I bet that would be great. Yeah, I made a pair for my mom actually, um, Jeffrey, when when she was you know, when she was still alive and, um, she had uh, cold feet. She had poor circulation, um, lots of circulation, heart issues and things like that. And her legs and feet would be very cold or they would swell. And so I made her some of these yoga leg warmer things and, and she wore them some so that, you know, that was nice. I think it, those could be, be used a lot more in situations like that, you know, in uh, nursing homes and places of need. Um, well, I wanted to read you some encouraging words before I go today because Hannah needs, I need to leave, leave soon because, um, or get off soon so that Hannah can be free. She has to finish, finish up, you know, the getting things fixed from the lightning strike and, um, they need to go out and go shopping and get some things so that they can have the HTC guy come back in and, and, and do the work he needs to do. But I did want it to leave with some encouraging words from my favorite book in the whole wide world and beyond. And um, this is um, from Psalm 34, just a, a gentle reminder for all of us. And when I read this, it's a great reminder for me as well, because I tend to forget this and I need to be constantly reminded. This is a Psalm of David. Um, when, and when David was in, in, in a grave situation, um, he was changing his behavior before Abimelech. Um, he was acting crazy so that the king would send David away. 
And um, this is his response to the Lord. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Ah, oh, I love this. This is one of my favorite promises. So I hope that encourages you. I hope you have a spectacular week this week. And Lord willing, see you next Friday. Bye-bye.